Hi everyone, it's Sarah Altair with Actation Live and this is the Midweek Zap. And I'm very excited today to have Lori Osterberg with us. She is a ghostwriter, copywriter for many different types of organizations and businesses. And she's going to be talking about ghostwriting um, from the social perspective. So Lori, welcome. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm excited to be here. Uh, my name is is Lori Osterberg, and I am with a company called The Social Ghost. I've been writing for uh, geez, for a number of years, um, both for personal and for pleasure. Um, I've owned three different businesses, so again, I've kind of written and marketed for a variety of things. Um, but this kind of came out so probably seven years ago that uh, we started working with different people on blogs, and we slowly discovered that they could get the blogs out there, but then they didn't know what to write once they got them up. So they would literally just kind of sit there with no content being added. So uh, I kind of jumped into ghost blogging from that just to help out a few clients and actually fell in love with it because it got my writing ability to go out there. And so it's a lot of fun now of, of becoming a ghost blogger in that I become all these other people. Um, I wear the other, these other hats and can produce a lot of different content in a variety of different ways. And obviously working with clients more and more over the, you know, the course of months and even years, I've learned to take not only you know, their advice on what they want to do, but also build kind of their persona and help them really get their, their ideas out there to their market share. So it's, it's been a lot of fun writing for people like that. OK, great. So we have a couple of comments here. Uh, and. Oh, first is from Justin Case, and he says, ghost writing, huh? Sounds transparent. <laughs> Who are you going to call? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Hi, Justin. Thanks for being here. And thanks for all the Zapsters for being here today. And then here's the long form of that question, and I think it's a great introduction. This is uh, from We Wake in London, near London. Here's a serious question. If one is out in the market, looking for a ghost blogger how does one pick the proper one it's a two-part question the ghost has to speak with my voice so to speak so what are the criteria one should use while hiring someone else to blog keen to hear Lori osterberg's answer i think that is a great question and actually it's one that you know we answer obviously with each client that we have and i think a lot of it comes down to personal choice um, for me, the first thing I always do is is also share with people some of the other you know places that I've worked, some of the other uh, companies that I've written for, because um, a lot of times it's good just to take a look at what they've written. Do you see your your own perspective in what they've written? And again, a lot of times you know you can take on different personas depending on the industry. But I think it's also important just to see, you know, is do they write from a personal standpoint or a personable standpoint? Do they take on more of a, a business flair? Um, you know, what is what's their style? How do they like to write? Because uh, there's definitely something that you have to kind of feel, get the feel for a person. But also keep in mind that sometimes it also is something that comes through a process. I know I've worked with a number of clients and sometimes it's taken several weeks to really get the feel of what a person wants. Um, the more you're willing to share about who you are and what you want to put out to the world, the easier it is for a ghost blogger to actually understand that as well. And again, from a relationship standpoint, I've been working with some companies now for six or seven years writing for them. And so literally, I'm like a part of their marketing team. I know what they're, what they're doing from their marketing perspective. I know how they like to write. Um, especially in the beginning, a lot of correction goes on going, you know, I don't like that word, those words. I like longer phrases. I like shorter phrases. I like bullet items. Things like that all kind of come together as you learn how to work with each other. And ultimately, it is all about them and what they want to put out there. So as long as you're willing to, to work through those first few weeks, um, you know, it can come fairly quickly to a person that, that knows how to write. Uh, I have a question for you in that regard, and that is, uh, um, when you when you are looking at a client's material and you're starting out, and you're looking at their voice, sometimes their voice. I, th I think you have a good example of this, so that's why I'm asking this question. Okay. Sometimes their voice is really not a connection with the target audience they're trying to meet. So how do you go about educating them to, that 
their language their or their tone or something needs to change to make a uh, more direct connection with their target market? That's a great question. And yes, I have a, a great example of that. Um, a few years ago, we started working with a plastic surgeon. And this plastic surgeon, again, was very much into the medical terminology. Uh, his site was completely filled with words like rhinoplasty and you know all the, the buzzwords of the industry. And when we sat down and we started doing research um, through a variety of different tools, we discovered that an equal amount of people were hunting for nose jobs, that they did not know what a rhinoplasty surgery was at that point. So we had to educate him so that he understood that you know you want to reach out to your target market and speak in their language, not necessarily in how you speak, you know, in that case, doctor terms, doctor terminology back to the client. You want to capture them from more of a consumer-based level first. And so through just a little bit of education, he understood that. And again, when you went out to his blog after just a few months, it was filled with more of nose job type things to you know actually get in there and attract his type of clientele and then once they learn the technology they learn you know all the different words that you use those buzz buzzwords then we can incorporate those back into blog posts too and get a little more technical but you also have to stay you know at the bottom level to reach out those first few people that are just you know typing into google and searching for you know they don't even know at that point that's that's true and i think it's part of the the client education is is that you know however however brilliant you might be you still have to connect with your audience and oftentimes one of the reasons that people are looking for someone to write for them isn't necessarily just to save time but because they are having um, a problem connecting with with their market they've been writing for a while and nothing is happening so I, th I think it's really an important part of, of that client education is to help them understand how the writing itself helps to connect with their audience. Correct, and I agree. And that's how we start out every relationship is with a bunch of questions to really pull out who the target market is. Because like you said, in some cases, I, I've found that clients don't truly understand their, their pure target market, which is often different in a more traditional setting, you know, offline than it is online. So it, it involves doing a lot of research, too, to figure out who their client is and what they're, they're searching for online, where they are located online, and physically how to reach out to them and terminology. Because they're doing their searches based on, you know, their own language whatever comes to them when they're sitting down not necessarily what you know especially a business owner would anticipate two separate things so to look at it from those two angles you know you can create a wealth of content and a lot of times I've done that again I mentioned that I've worked with um, one contractor for over six years and I'm surprising them all the time with all the different concepts I'm coming out with just watching what people are truly searching for and the different words because what means something to you or me or to you know a business owner is not necessarily how a person is going to type when they start looking for your services exactly and you know you said you know as you learn what they're searching for and how do you how do you go about doing this I think this is one of the very important ways that um, copywriters can help businesses is understanding what the market is searching for and discovering that so that they can actually answer the questions that the market wants answered and solve the problems that you know point to the solution that the business can offer correct and then keeping in mind that different regions and stuff have different words for things you know I'll throw up another example that I, I use quite frequently is that you know here in the United States um, if I am working with someone that's more um, children based you know I would use like the term diapers but I was working with a New Zealand firm a year or so ago and you know they're nappies out there so it's even the different terminology that you have to use and adjust your writing style based on who your client is and what they're searching for which can be completely different different in different regions of the world oh hey that is so true <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one of one of the one of the skills that copywriters use when they're serving a global market is the ability to 
to write in both British and Australian or what we call um, U.S. global English because it's different and the vocabularies are different and a, a lot of other things are different. You know, the, the, the phraseology, the idiomatic phraseology is different as well. So, um, and, and words have, the, have different meanings. Just a, a really simple example is like, you know, in, a, in, in the U.S., someone might say, oh, that's really awesome. And in um, the U.K., it's brilliant. So, you know, those are just little subtle things that a copywriter is going to know and, and going to incorporate into your, in, into your copy, depending on who you're, market is okay and we wake has something else here so let's see what he has to say a ghost blogger cannot be just an amplifier probably needs to give a different voice too that is a great point for those of us who do not have a marketing voice i agree i i'm going to respond to that it's so true we wake um that the copywriter takes on a different voice and it's a balance between what the business the voice the voice of the business and the voice that works with the business's audience it's um it's there's a lot of fine tuning with vocabulary and words and sentence structure and length of sentences and all that sort of thing yeah, and I definitely agree with that. And it also comes down to, you know, working with someone. Ghost blogging is, you know, when you first start out, it's a matter of fine tuning that relationship between the business owner and the copywriter, like you said, and coming up with that over time. And oh, especially if you work with someone month after month, you start building that and you um, honestly, you can get into that persona and you just literally can start writing as that, you know, as that company, it becomes a part of, of how you do the process, how you, how you write for them. It is, I think of it sort of like acting. <laughs> it <laughs> is in a lot of ways. Yeah, because you're sort of, you know, as you're writing, you just become that person and your voice changes and, and the words that you use change. And, and so it's, significantly different i think to go back to wick's question at the beginning how do how do i know i how to choose someone i think one of the best tests we wake would be to to ask them for samples from different clients if their clients are agreeable of course um, to see the difference in tone voice and vocabulary Correct. And I agree with that. And then also check out their own personal blogs because I do a lot of writing myself so that people can get a feel for how I write my style in the first place. Because, you know, that part, you, you tend to incorporate your own style even into your clients somewhat because it's just how you write. It's the things you do. So if you if you like some of, of the blog posts that you're seeing on their site themselves, make sure that they're the ones writing it and then you can get kind of a flavor for how they how they approach writing overall that's a real that's a very good point that's a very good point and then we has something just for fun he says bob is not everybody's uncle phrases are different depending on the country <laughs> it's so true <laughs> it's um it's um it's a large skill set Maybe you'd like to amplify on that, Lori. You know, it is a large skill set. So, you know, what are some of the things that a skilled and seasoned ghostwriter has in their, you know, trade bag, as, as, as it were? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, the most important thing to me is just writing on a daily basis. You need writing from a, a lot of different perspectives just to kind of fine tune your skills so that you always are, are approaching things from a different way. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of different tools online that, that I use and things like that too. Um, I think some of the other things, it, it also comes down to reading and 
you know, figuring out what's happening in the industry that you're potentially writing as well. Um, especially when I have a long-term commitment with, with a client when I've worked for them for a number of months or even a number of years, um, I subscribe to some of the trade publications and things like that so that I'm constantly being you know, fulfilled and I, I understand their industry. What's new in the world? What's, what new regulations possibly are in place or you know, new technology that's coming, coming out you know, on a frequent basis? Um, laws that are changing in you know, a lot of the different companies that I help certain laws come into place that really impact their industry so if I'm in tune with that and you know using Google um, alert functions and all these different things I'm instantly aware of those kinds of things that take place and then if I don't fully understand it I can connect back with the business owner to find out how that's impacting them to make that blog post you know to make the writing style more personable and it also helps educate their clientele that are following them on a regular basis because they're getting this information you know very quickly and so a lot of times even before you know coming did you know coming up at the end of summer this is taking place prepare now and so I'm almost helping them market without them even having to think about it mm -hmm. And so I think one one of the basic skills is researching. It's how right. you, you stay you stay in touch with that information, and you know. Um, I I think that part of the ghostwriter's role with a business is to take the burden of thinking about what those topics are going to be. It depends on it. Actually, depends on the client, but. For many, they don't even want to think about it. They don't want to think, you know, hey, listen, I really want an article on X, you know. Um, they just want to make sure that something is coming out for them on a regular basis, What, whatever that scheduling is that they have agreed to in their contract. And then we have um, a great comment from Johan Claes. Hi, Johan. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Ghostwriters have a great empathy in order to be able to write ideas down. It's teamwork, I guess. Yes, it is. It's teamwork. I, I think that, you know, in order to assume the role of the business persona who's speaking, it is teamwork. You really have to know. I think Lori has really stressed that today. You, you have to know your client. You have to Correct. know your business. You have to know you, you have to know it well enough to do just what Lori just mentioned, which is to know what's coming up in the future so you can check in with a client and say, you know, is this impacting your business? How? And then you can address those issues in the copy that's written. Correct. And, you know, I mean, I have some clients, again, that I've worked for for a number of years that we literally don't speak a lot. We, you know, do things through email occasionally if certain ideas come into play. But I'm so much a part of their team that I can and have access just to write and, you know, do that part for them. And then I can go to the other extreme, too. I have one, one client that we meet for an hour every single month, and we discuss strategy for the month. What's, you know, what are you going to focus on? What's, what marketing things are coming up for you the next month? Um, you know, is there any specials that you want to offer and even growth issues? Sometimes she just bounces ideas off of me for things for ideas that, that are coming up that she's just been thinking about um, And then even to another extreme I have one that literally we we go through a title after title to make sure we're on the same track before I even go into production So a lot of it just depends on what type of business person they are and what they're most comfortable with, you know, do they want to just let someone handle the whole thing or do they want to be a part of the process and in some cases I think the good part about having that is you know if you have a ghost blogger and they're posting once or twice or three times a week, you know that content's always going to be there for you, but that doesn't mean that you can't be supplying content as well, even from your own voice, you know, for more personal type stuff. Let's say you attend a, a seminar or an expo or, you know, a fair of some sort, you can be putting that kind of stuff and feeding it in in the process to work together to add even more content and complexity to your blog, which, which really makes it effective too. Mm -hmm. And then Lee Rickler has a question, and then Lee's question is, what is your view on services like Copify? Copify. Hmm. I have not heard of that one, so have you heard of that, Zara? Could you tell us what it is? Um, is? Is that something that's in the UK? 
anyway, if you could just give us a brief explanation and when we can expand on that. Um, and then Johan has another comment. He says, have you, have you had, I think it's have you had ghostwriting experience with someone who has another mother tongue? Is that workable? I just ask, I am curious. Um, I would say, like I said, I've worked with uh, people. I, I had a, a client in New Zealand, so it was slightly a different English, different spellings, um, some different things like that that we had to work with. Um, outside of, you know, actually has, speaking a different language, I have never worked with someone from that aspect before. Um, yeah, that would be difficult to do, minus if you were trying to reach out to a new market share. I could see the potential there if you're trying to, let's say, come into the U.S. or something like that and you're wanting a new perspective, that would definitely work from that angle then. Mm -hmm. And then just to further amplify, yes, uh, I have done that, Johan, um, with French and Greek clients and and it works actually very well if, if they want the writing in English. For example, one wanted U.S. writing, one wanted UK writing on, on, in totally different fields. One was in the travel industry and another was in the film industry. So it, it just depends. But yes, I think that's all part of the copywriter's ability to, to work that way. Uh, and to all of the things we've been talking about today. So just to further amplify. Okay. Okay, and Lee, you want to talk about that while I check out Lee's Copify, Copify link? Copify. Yeah, he sent us the link. I'm going to check it out, and if you could tell people a little bit about how you go about screening clients, because not everyone is a good fit. Correct. Um, I would say typically my ideal client is small to medium sized businesses. Obviously, when you can start bringing that in house, um, you know, ten, people tend to go that way a little bit more. Usually, what I, I find works well with people is when they are making the transition to the online world, they know that they want um, to have an online presence. A lot of times, it comes from a fact of someone knows they want to get onto Facebook or to Twitter and they just haven't had any luck with it so far, they're wanting to expand that out as well. Um, and they're looking for the content in order to be able to do that. Um, once you reach that point and you realize how valuable content is, that's when you can start looking and working with uh, a ghost blogger to, to come on and actually help build your business from that perspective. Um, also, I think one of the things that I've, I've done very well with, with helping clients with too is when you're ready to start building more of a relationship marketing campaign as opposed to you know just trying to bring in new business all the time. So once you've achieved a, a level of success that you want to start keeping clients as opposed to just bringing in a lot of new ones. Uh, because with that, because if I'm creating content on a regular basis, I also find that a lot of my clients use that content in a variety of ways. So not just from their blog perspective. Um, to give you an example, again, a lot of them feed them into their social accounts, uh, but a lot of people create newsletters with the things they do too. So they'll take the blog post and they'll feed it into both a traditional newsletter as well as you know potentially an online newsletter as well. Um, I even have one gentleman who uh, works with a, a lead group, or like a networking group, and goes in once once per week to for a lead generation uh, meeting and he actually uses my blog post to spawn ideas as to how he can fill his 30 seconds presentations because you know he get he was tired of going in there and repeating the same 30 seconds every single week and so he just logs in checks a look at the latest blog post and he uses that to come up with his ideas now for networking functions so again you can use the content in a variety of ways so as your marketing is growing and you're building I think you have to almost think of your copy blogger or your ghost blogger as a team member who not only you know can help you get your message out, but also can help you spawn ideas as to what people are truly interested in, 
and again, I think a lot of times that that changes season by season, which is one of the benefits of, of how we do it too, because obviously things in the summer change from things that happen in the winter or, you know, based around the holidays based compared to maybe when school starts or something like that. So we can kind of fine tune and keep you on track for things that people potentially are searching for now as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go back to Lee's Copyfy service, and and that is Lori. It's it's one of many services that are online, and they offer they offer copywriting. Um, they have a rapid turnaround. They do instant publishing. And they have no contracts for so it's a work by work, piece by piece contract, and and the writers themselves are filtered by the by the company. So I'll let you go first on that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The thing that I would say to that is is it depends on the service, and again, I would have to do some research on it. But to me, the main key is also realizing who's going to be your writer. Are you working directly with the person writing the posts for you? Or is there like a behind the scenes team and it's kind of a hit or miss you're getting whoever happens to be in the funnel to write your posts? Because if you have a lot of people, you know, kind of behind the scenes and you're not sure who your writer is going to be, you're constantly going to be getting a different voice with every post that is created. So part of it is I think it's important that you understand who your writer is so that you develop that relationship. And not only that, but again, writers take on their own persona. Even if they're working with you, they still are going to write at their own individual level. So if you are working one-on-one -on -one in that relationship and, and understand it, then you know the type of output that you're going to be getting you know, from now and next month and next, you know, as long as you want to continue the service, which I think is very important too. I agree. I, I agree. Um, oftentimes, the the team behind those services, all of those services are similar and yet different. And yes, it depends on the service, whether you have a choice of who you work with or not. For some, it's like whoever's up next gets that copywriting assignment. For others, you do have a choice of of working consistently with one writer. Um, and and so it's it's not that direct connection. Correct. And I think overall, especially if you want someone like this to be on your team and to, you know, to help you not only with just putting content out there, but you also are looking at it from a marketing perspective to have that inner relationship where you're connecting with someone and, you know, you're, they're building, they're building up that, that process of learning who you are. And like I said, with me, especially with long-term clients, you know, if I read something in a newspaper or a magazine or something, I'm always have my clients in mind and I can pull articles and, and it's, it just, it's very effective from that standpoint of, it's not just a writing assignment. It's also part of being a part of the team and watching out for what's coming up next. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it is um, a very collaborative process. Correct. It, it's collaborative. And I, and I think that the service that you get with someone who is dedicated to copywriting, who is skilled, who has experience, um, the collaborative relationship is going to be a lot smoother and much more collaborative, actually. So Wewick, uh, Wewick says, it looks like this Copyfy is a service that can bring together ghost bloggers and their prospective clients, but they seem to be UK centric. So the question would be, should the content on internet be so specific to country? You know, from my perspective, I would say that it, it just depends on who you are, what your business is about and what your goals ultimately are. Um, you know, I've, I've had some 
we'll use like a plumber, for instance. I mean, obviously there's no way he can provide plumbing service, you know, if he's in Texas to someone in the UK, it's just impossible. He can't travel that far. So for him, he's going to be very specific about his geographical region versus, you know, I've worked with companies that sell again, like children's products, they can go around the world, they can sell to virtually anybody. So I think a lot of it depends on you know who you are and what your ultimate strategy is for marketing and who you're trying to reach out to and it, once you start analyzing that and creating that target market that's going to kind of dictate how you create that content and how you gear it out towards the world yeah i uh, i think that's a really important point it all goes back to that very beginning just to elaborate on the next question it goes back to the beginning because when when your your copywriter wants to know everything about your business and they want to know everything that you know about your target market and i and for some for some businesses the copywriter may even help them target further who their market is because the copywriter's job is to speak specifically to the most to the market that is most interested in having the solutions that your business provides yes i couldn't agree more with you it, it's it's just so important at the beginning all the time that it takes in the beginning to give them all your files, to show your copywriter everything that's written written by you or by anybody else for your business, and to talk about what you like about what that previous work contains and what you don't like about it, gives the copywriter more clues as to how to direct their writing. So it's really important. Oh, and then Justin has something here. Justin says, many of these copywriting services that I have come across are aggregated from a pool of inexperienced writers and often use source material that is biased. And personally, I can tell right away that the writer doesn't know the subject well enough. I agree, Justin. It's pretty obvious. Um, and I think that right now, too, is kind of the separation point because there's a lot of services that try and make content very accessible, free to some extent, um, very low cost. They just try and, you know, throw as much content out there. And from an SEO perspective, we are now realizing, you know, that Google is, is finding ways to weed that out there, that they don't want that quick content. They're looking for more quality. And so as long as you're more interested in growing your business for the long term and you're looking at it, you know, from more from that team perspective, or collaborative perspective like what you said to actually find someone that, that's willing to work with you long term and that wants to understand what you're trying to offer your clients I think you're going to benefit from the long run I, I totally agree and I and thank you for bringing up that point about you know the new optimization because it is it is so different Google would rather have you have one good quality on point article per week than five that are gibberish. Exactly. And I see a lot of posts out there now, you know, even with maybe a paragraph or two or three sentences and they'll connect out to other things. They're just trying to get the content out there as fast as they can. And that's, you know, when I find sites like that, I back out. And I think you also have to think from that perspective of what do you like to see online when you do your own personal searches. And for me, you know, I like quality. I like to be able to go out and find someone that knows their topic, that writes in detail, because that's what interests me. So, yeah. And then um, here's here here's Lee's feedback. Lee, I'm sorry, comment tracker is being strange. Okay, here's Lee's feedback on on Copify. Uh, I think it's in a nutshell, as Lee often does. One of my clients was using Copify. The work returned was okay, but needed a bit of work honing down to fit the client. It was a bit like using Google Translate to translate a document, then sending it to a pro translation service to clean up. <laughs> Perfectly, thank you. 
Thank you. So I think Lee answered our question. I, Lee, you answered your own question. It's a translation of a translation. It's like the words are there, but they're not really suited to the business uh, per se. And and the sentences need need some work. That's what I found with copy that comes out of places like that, that there's, there's a lot of translating. That's, that's perfect. I love it. Translating. Thanks, Lee. Okay, so we're coming down to the last few minutes here, Lori. So I'm I'm going to give you just free free time. Why don't you give us what you think are the most important aspects of hiring um, a ghostwriter, especially from I like I like I love the title of your business, the social ghost. Because it is all about connecting, you know, you're not just writing this and having it stuck away somewhere. The whole point is to engage the target market. So why don't you give us a wrap up on all the benefits you can think of? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, I completely agree. And I think one of the things that really brought me to the online world is with from a traditional standpoint, you know, if you create a brochure, if someone and you hand that out, that person decides what they want to do. And more than likely, it's going to end up in the trash can. Uh, but with a blog post, it can stay there and work for you for, you know, decades, depending on how long you keep your blog going and how long you're in business. And so that very first post that you create can literally talk about who you are and what you have to offer. And it will work no matter how many posts you create over the months and years that, that come. So it all kind of joins together and becomes a part you know of something really great that can really help your business overall and that's what i find so exciting about it and really focusing in on creating the best quality content from the beginning because again it's always going to be out there working for you um, so if i had to give a couple action steps i think the first one i would say would be to uh, stop thinking like a marketer and start thinking like your customer what problems do, do you, does your customer have? Why are they going out there to search in the first place? Um, I'll use an example, again, kind of from a plumbing standpoint of a lot of times they might not even realize they need a new water heater in the beginning. Maybe their water heater is simply making a clinking noise. So they head out online onto Google and they type, why is my water heater making a clinking noise? Um, from that perspective, you can capture their attention because you're thinking like they are. What, what are they searching for? And you're not thinking about, you know, all I want to do is sell a water heater. You start at the beginning and that allows you to kind of join in and to become a part of the conversation and build that relationship up before it gets to the point of actually creating the sale. Um, I would say something, uh, number two, uh, number two action step would be to actually come through and start designing uh, regular content on a regular basis. So what I mean by that is start scheduling how often you want to communicate with your potential customer. Because one of the hardest things that I think, especially from a blog writing perspective that people have is they're excited about it in the beginning and they might write a post or two a week for the first month or so. And then it becomes once every two weeks and then once every month and then once every year. And it's hard for your marketing to take any effect at all if you're not doing something on a regular basis. So if you want to start communicating, start communicating on once a week basis or twice a week. Choose how often you want to go out there and communicate and then do it on a regular basis. That will give you your biggest bang for the buck and you'll see the most um, the most growth potential if you focus in on how often you want to connect. And that will also give you a way of you know, communicating in all the other social realms as well. And then I think my third um, action step would be to think quality, not quantity. Because so many people want to you know, dump as much content as they possibly can onto the marketplace. Uh, but again, we kind of alluded to this earlier as well, and that quality says everything, not only to your client's reading, but more and more to Google as well, because they're now able to weed through, you know, all the SEO stuff, the you know, black hat type philosophies and stuff that may have worked even just a few short years ago. But now they're starting to weed through that. And what we're seeing is that if you're writing very good quality content that speaks directly to your customer, chances are it's going to speak to Google as well. And as long as it's working both sides like that, you're going to have success from this point forward. 
So I think in overall, that would probably be my three biggest things to work on from this point forward. Super, that was a great quick wrap up. And just in case, just echoing what you said, quality beats out quantity every time. Have to agree. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Capping it all off. So, Lori, um, thank you so much. And tell everyone how they can get in touch with you. And I know you have another service as well that people might like to know about. Uh, yes, thank you. Obviously, you can get in touch with me at thesocialghost.com. Um, and of course, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all those sites too at The Social Ghost. So you can find me on any of those tools as well. And then I do also, um, yes, I offer a, a coaching business to help business owners. I have owned three businesses over the course of the last 20, 25 years here. Um, so I'm breaking into coaching for business as well. And that's at visionofsuccess.com. So either way, I love helping with the marketing and with the writing side. So I'm kind of branching out into all those services to help business owners really, ca really catapult themselves and get out there and get known. Super. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. This was very, very informative. So Thanks, thanks Zara. I appreciate it. All right. And thank you, everyone, for all your questions and comments. Uh, it really makes the show lively and i i love the zapsters i just want to thank you all for being here and we'll see you next week so thanks everyone <laughs>